Hello and welcome to Vegas Aces. I'm your host, Heather Ferris, and today we are joined with a special guest, Mark from TruePokerDealer.com. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Always happy to be here. Appreciate Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Always good to, or always happy to have you here. Thank you so much. You are just a wealth of knowledge and information. So I always feel like uh, my audience gets a special treat when you're on. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Now, today we are going to be talking about reading the lows. And uh, no, I'm not talking about those lows or those highs. That's a different part of Las Vegas. We will have lounges <laughs> here pretty soon. Um, but we are talking about lows from Omaha. So, Mark, do you want to uh, tell people a little bit about uh, Omaha and what the highs are and the lows are? I will do that and thank you for all that. So uh, a little bit of background real quick. I am Mark Shumsker. I'm known on YouTube as True Poker Dealer and I sort of mirror what Heather does in the poker side of it where Heather does everything in table games um, on Vegas Aces. And one of the things that I have taught a lot of people is how to read Omaha hands. Now, if you're not familiar with Omaha, um, you must, in Omaha, every player at the table gets four cards and there is a flop turn and river that is shared between everybody those are the community cards so there's five cards on the board four cards in your hand and you must use exactly two to win and in omaha sometimes if the table wants to play a game like this half the pot will go to the highest hand and the other half of the pot will go to what's known as the low hand okay so okay. that's what we're going to be describing so basically it's like Texas uh, Hold'em, except you get four cards instead of two cards, but you can only pick two of the four cards. That's right. So, and it's, it's sort of like you don't choose them. It's automatically whatever your best two from your hand that match with uh, three from the board that create the best possible hand that you have. Okay, that's, that's good. Have, yeah. So it's not like the player could screw it up or anything. As long as you table your hand, if you have the best hand, it's yours. You win. That's actually one of the things in poker is a rule known as cards speak, where everybody at the table, the dealer, the other players that aren't even a part of the game, have the responsibility to point it out if something gets messed up. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, you just have to table your hand by putting it flat face up on the table. It has to be actually flat on the table face up. But okay. yeah, so that's, that's that. So what is a low is probably the... A question I get a lot um, and a low in Omaha is so these games are often considered eight or better okay so picture this the game of poker has pairs and straights and flushes and full houses and all this stuff okay the low version of your hand is not like that at all it's a different world of things it's actually a lot simpler okay the low version of the hand is something like seven, five, four, tray deuce, okay? So it's going to be five cards that are all different in rank, okay? You can't have a pair for a low. Every single one of them has to be different in rank. And they all, if it's an eight or better game, like the Omaha games would be, then it has to, in order to qualify, it has to be eight or lower. Okay, so basically right? it's like the lowest high card on the table. Correct. And in order to win the low, you must be lower than everybody else, like Limbo. Hello, can you go? Exactly. <laughs> so, so the best possible low you can have, again, straights, flushes, they don't matter for the low. Okay. The best possible low you can have is known as the wheel. And that's going to be a five, four, tray, deuce, ace. Aces do count as the lowest possible value in Omaha. Okay. Gotcha. So sometimes it can be pretty tricky understanding what somebody's low actually is. And let me give you a little bit of insight into why that is. So the first, and, and by the way, I have a really cool tool and I have a place where you can learn this really well. So you can see right here on this screen, um, this is my bonus mixed games course playlist. And there's, you have a link, I think in this video, right? Yes, we're going to have uh, the links that we talk about in the description below. If you guys are interested, check that out. 
I appreciate that. Now this is, it, you have to join my channel in order to have access to some of this. Although lesson number one is totally free if you wanna learn. And I do touch on the low a little bit in this video, but lesson three right here, the Omaha lesson that will finally have you feel comfortable dealing Omaha. I spend, it's, it's a two hour and 44 minute lesson where I go through and go over every single possible scenario of reading highs and reading lows and how to do it quickly so that you can keep up with the very obnoxious Omaha players. Um, sometimes that is that is what you're dealing to. Sometimes they're cool, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but uh, so this is this is a playlist. Now, when you when you watch this video, you can see me go over all these examples. Now think about this. If you have a queen, jack, four and a five in your hand, and there is an ace, a deuce, and a six on the board, okay? So if you had a four and five in your hand and there's a six, deuce, and ace on the board, then you're using the four and the five in your hand, which is two cards, and the six, the deuce, and the ace on the board in order to create a six, five, four, deuce, ace, low, right? And you, when, you, when you think about a low, you read it that way. It goes the highest card first all the way down. Now, think about this for a second. I told you already, in order to have a qualifying Omaha hand, you must use two from your hand and three from the board exactly, okay? So if you have a hand in Omaha and they all have to be eight or lower, if you have a hand in Omaha, such as Jack, Jack, 10, 10, there's no possible way for you to have a low hand. And there's some strategy into playing the game associated with that thought process. Similarly, if you have, uh, in a, your hand is a four, tray, deuce, ace, and there's a five on the board, but there's no other low card, you cannot use three from the board and two from your hand, so you don't have any low, and, and therefore neither would anyone on the table. Okay, so you have to use two cards from your hand. You can't just be like, oh, the board looks fantastic, I'm gonna use the board. Correct, yeah, you have no choice there. And if the, yeah, as a player playing Omaha, if you do not have two cards that you can use to make a low, then you have no low. And there are plenty of hands in Omaha if it's an eight or better game where, and, and this can be the same for stud, it can be stud eight or better. There's other versions of poker that do this as well, but there are plenty of situations where the board doesn't have three separate low cards that are all different in rank, and therefore nobody could possibly have a low. And as a dealer, you actually pretend like you don't notice that because you don't want to violate the one player per hand rule. So what, could you elaborate on that a little bit? So in poker, one of the fundamental rules of the whole game of poker is one player per hand, meaning only the player who is playing their cards is able to make their own decisions and provide information or have information that can be a part of making their own decisions. Now, in one player per hand, if a dealer were to tell the table, hey, there's no low here, that's that dealer giving strategy awareness to the player, right? So oh. by, by speaking up as the dealer, you are giving information that a player is responsible to realize on their own. Oh. Now look, if a dealer says that, it's too late, there's nothing you can do about it. They've already violated the one player per hand rule and the hand has to go on, but you get yourself in trouble if you do that because you are potentially changing the decisions of the players. Now there's Listen, I, I've dealt plenty of poker. I can't even tell you how many times a player folds a winning hand without realizing it, so. Ooh. Now, what if you make this mistake as a dealer? And I'm, I'm sort of sidetracking, so forgive me. Um, if you make this mistake as a dealer and the, the players call you out on it, um, what is there like a, a, do you get written up for that? Is there a penalty for that? So the first thing that I'll say is that is going to depend on exactly how it plays out. Um, hmm. if, you, if you as the dealer, end up influencing the outcome of the hand depending on the circumstances and how severe it was and all that mm -hmm. and how much money it was you, oh, yeah, yeah. you can end up you can end up with a pretty significant write-up yeah. um but that being said i mean if you were trying to do your job and you're new like there is an awareness of that so you might get more leeway and some training um, if a player told you you do it as a dealer if you'd never heard that you're not allowed to do that you you probably haven't been trained enough uh, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Yeah, but one player per hand. I mean, there's only two fundamental rules and I've actually mentioned both of them in this video. The other one is card speak. One player per hand, card speak. The two fundamental rules of poker. I actually 
do an entire video in my Texas Hold'em course on those two rules just to tie that into a dealer's thinking as they think about dealing the game of poker. What is the title of the, that video if people want to look that up? Uh, that is the two fundamental rules of poker, I think. Let's let's check it out. Um, okay. Let's go here and playlists and double checking. And you can see it over here. Um, do you have a green screen behind? Oh yeah, you do. Okay. This is, where is it? Yeah, the two fundamental rules of poker right here. Fantastic. So if you guys are inter interested, check that out as well as all of his other videos because he has a ton of information on his channel. And if you're interested in more information than that, uh, you can subscribe to be a member and get uh, even more behind the scenes. Yeah, right here. If you want to join the channel, you do get access to the course with, with all of that good info. So nice. a lot of stuff there. Sweet. Very, very cool. So I just teased something that we're going to talk about in a second. <laughs> um, so look, here's the thing that I'll say. Uh, there are some complicated situations that it, this video is not going to be long enough to explain in order to read Lowe's really, really efficiently and read Omaha hands officially, etc. cetera. Um, a couple quick examples are it can be confusing as a dealer if you are faced with a situation where there's like a, an eight, six, tray deuce on the board okay so there's four cards to a low and somebody has a uh four deuce and somebody else has like a six ace and you're trying to figure out what wins because one player is using sort of two cards from their hand and three cards from the board but there's a match so it's like one of the cards from their hand is the same as a card on the board so as a dealer you'd actually frame the other three cards and only use one it, it's a little bit hard to spot until you train your mind to think in terms of uh, Lowe's and Omaha. And the course that I just showed you, which is the bonus mix game course that you can get with that lesson that will finally get you comfortable dealing Omaha, that gives you all of the things to put in your head so that you can do it quickly, as quickly as anybody at the table, nice. okay? In addition, I do have a tool that I can show you. If you share the screen, I'll tell you, I'll show, I'll share this tool. Um, somebody who I'm friendly with through True Poker Dealer, who is currently a dealer in Minnesota, um, and they are formerly a video game programmer. They've programmed uh, Super Nintendo games and, and stuff like that over the years. They made this just because they wanted to. And so it, it says right here, get it on Google Play, download it on the App Store. And all you have to do in order to get this is on your phone go to the app store or google play store whichever phone type you have and just get it says right here mixed nuts and it's a very helpful thing and it's totally free that's okay cool. so right here um we're gonna just give you a little bit of insight into how this works so so you can see here you can use omaha 8 and what this does here is it puts a board up there and then it gives you options for the hands okay so because we're focusing on the low right now um i'm going to not worry about what the right answer is here um because there's no so this is a great example actually there are not three individual cards that are low in this hand there's no three cards that are eight or lower it's just a deuce is the only one because of that none of these hands can have a low so in order to get to the next hand and now i actually have to figure out what the winning hand is here uh <laughs> No pressure. Go through. Eh, it's all good. I, I actually do this stuff on my channel sometimes for fun. Oh, cool. Um, I'm just I'm just going to guess that it's this. Nope. Oh, it tells you if you're wrong. Oh, yeah. Kings full of tens. Duh. I'm just trying to do it quickly because I want to. Oh, I forgot to uncheck that. Hey, good job. Good job, us. All right. So here is a great example. You can see that there are three cards that are lower than eight that are all different. There's a seven, a six, and a five. All right. So let's just look together and see what low hands might be here on this board. This one right here has has two cards in it that are eight or lower, but one of them is matching here. So because of that, there would only be four cards in this hand that would qualify for low. Therefore, there's no low here. Okay. Um, and again, if you if you watch some of the lessons that I put out, this will make a lot more sense. Uh, over here, there's another two cards that are eight or lower, but a five 
is a pairing the one up here. And so there would only be four total in that case as well. Now, when you get down to here, you can see all four of these cards from this hand are eight or lower. And we do successfully have a low. The low here, let's see, did I, did I make enough sense to you for you to be able to pick out what the low is in this hand? So the two and the four would be the low, right? That's very close. Remember, ace is the lowest. Ace in poker is generally high, but when yeah. it comes to the low, the ace is the lowest card. Right, okay. So here, it's gonna be the deuce and the ace, and okay. it's gonna go seven, six, five, deuce, ace. Okay. All right, and then we can see right there that is actually the low, and this is the lowest possible low somebody could have. So unless someone else also had a, a, a deuce and an ace in their hand, um, then they that would tie. Would the... This is definitely the winner without that, yeah. Okay. And then just, just looking at the board, so maybe we can get to the next one here. Uh, I'm just very quickly looking for a spade flush. I don't see it. So now I'm looking for a straight with an eight, and I see it here. I see it here. So we're going to say this is the high, unless there's another straight. So. Do, 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 do. Um, and one, do, thing, do. one thing that's nice about this app is if you click over it, it tells you what, what it is. That's so, cool. Yeah, if you're really lost, just click on it and then try to figure out for yourself how they came to that conclusion and you should be good. Okay, let's see. Um, can I guess? Sure. Ooh, what fantastic. is the low in this hand? I think the eight and the four in the very first hand is the low one. So I'm going to say that is a fantastic guess, but I want to remind you, I'm sorry to have to say this, but I want to <laughs> remind you, there's only two separate cards that are eight or lower on the board. So if you use the eight and the four, it's going to be eight, four, deuce, ace. That's only four cards. Oh. So you can't actually have a low unless there was another card on the board that was also a different oh. rank and lower. Oh, okay. So you have to have three low cards on the board in order for you to get the low because then you have to use your two low cards plus the three low cards that are on the board in order to get the low hand. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. And then, and then in this hand, I think this is the high because I don't see any full houses. I don't see a deuce or ace that would go with it. And... I really should have downloaded the Jeopardy theme song for this. <laughs> so what do you think with this one? Oh, yes. Okay. So we don't have three low cards on the board. We only have a six and a five. So That's no right. low? That's correct. Yay. Okay. And then same thing, a four and a two. And yeah, they're, uh, they're driving me crazy here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see if you can uh, uh, get out all the high cards real fast. Exactly. All right. So what about here? Oh, good. So we have a two, five, and six on the board. So that's fantastic. And a, and a seven. There's and a seven. Cards. Yep. Cool. So we have to get something that doesn't match. Two, three, okay. four, five, six is a straight. Uh, that's a straight. straight. Straights are totally fine, though. That, that's, that's, a, okay. that's okay? Yep, you can have a straight. Because the best possible low hand is going to be a wheel, which is a straight to the five. Five, four, trade deuce, ace. Okay, so then would the first hand with the three and the four be it? Uh, so the three and the four, remember the lowest card is going to be an ace. So right here, like we're looking at this, the ace and the deuce are the two lowest cards, but there's a deuce on the board. Right. So when you look up here, you see it goes seven, six, five, deuce. And what's missing to get as low as possible. The ace is missing to get as low as possible. And then the next lowest card would be a three. So okay. as a dealer, you actually start out just looking for an ace three. Now we don't see that here. Ah. And then you went to three, four. But even lower than three, four is ace four right here. Okay. All right. So, because think about this. I'm going to say it out loud what the hand is. Six, five, four, deuce, ace. Six, five, four, deuce, ace. With this one over here with the three and the four, it goes six, five, four, tray, deuce. Okay. So the fourth card here is going to be a tray, whereas the fourth card here is going to be the, the deuce on the board. A and that's why. Okay. That's why the ace four is better. Yes, that's correct. Got so it. I mean, this, this stuff gets a little bit complicated and tricky, but uh, I mean, yeah. I, look, Just we can do more examples if you want while I talk my way into looking at what the high hand is so I can see it. Actually, we'll just go like <laughs> this for all of them. Um, so you can sort of see this example. It, it shows it really nicely. Six, five, four, trade deuce, six, five, four, trade deuce. 
six five four deuce ace it skip it goes instead of a tray it's a deuce which is lower and that's how you compare to see which one wins okay it would be nice if dealers had this on the table uh yes <laughs> <laughs> and actually they technically could i mean if 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 maybe i'll ask him if he can make uh, casino software for ultimate what do you that'd think? be cool yeah that'd be really neat it could be tied into how would you do that using rfid maybe no no just have him do it on nintendo if he's like you know an old <laughs> nintendo person just have him make a nintendo game he, he told me that he created uh all of the programming from start to finish for death valley rally um that's which was cool with, uh, the roadrunner and stuff it sounded pretty it was pretty cool that's I remember really neat day. yeah <laughs> so you can see here we've got seven high straights for both of these and look if you're trying to do this on your own don't cheat but mm -hmm. You know right now hey good job <laughs> so yeah. if you guys want we have the link in the description check it out and you can do this yourself um is there any other uh is there anything else we have to go over before uh we end the video um i will just mention real quick when reading a low you know you can see this says omaha eight big o eight seven stud eight there's a game called raz and there's some other games in poker where uh, there is no eight qualification. You're just looking for the lowest hand. So you can have a king as, as the lowest high card in there. And um, yeah, it's just worth mentioning that. But yeah, if, if you want to learn really, truly how to read lows in Omaha, it, it takes some time. You know, like I said, I put together that two hour and 40 minute uh, lesson. It takes some time, but you just learn how to train your brain on it. Use this tool and you can get there. Fantastic. That sounds great. So check it out. We have the link in the description. Also go to truepokerdealer.com and check out the YouTube channel. We have those links in the description as well. Check out all of his videos, become a member, because again, you have some fantastic content on there. And thank, thank you so, so much for being on. Really do appreciate you uh, sharing your expertise with us. Thank you. Appreciate that too. And if you want to actually ask me questions directly, I do live streams Tuesdays, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you are able to just come. If I'm doing a QA, you can come and ask me anything you want. Nice. Very cool. Thank you so much, Mark. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Heather. You are literally the best. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's just that simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, again, we have a new video every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And until then, take care.